Hey everybody, it's Joe Deganzik and this is Smarter Home Life. It is Monday, June 13th, 2016. It is Apple Announcement Day, their yearly Worldwide Developer Conference, or WWDC, being held in San Francisco. It started at 10 a.m. this morning with the keynote and goes all week long. We'll have updates through social media and articles on the website throughout the week detailing any other information that we glean that affects the smarter home as announcements uh, come out from their various sessions and news bits and so forth. But to start the show, I wanted to just give kind of a kudos uh, out to Tim Cook and Apple for how they started the keynote this morning. Tim not only asked for a moment of silence, but asked the entire audience present to stand and reflect upon what happened in Orlando yesterday. Tim Cook like myself, is an openly gay person, and obviously what happened in Orlando, the tragedy, um, affected him more than perhaps, say, most other people. And for myself, I had actually been to the nightclub where that terrible, terrible set of events occurred um, yesterday uh, in the early morning hours. I was there about 10 or 11 years ago for an event. so. I just sort of have that little bit of an extra connection to it and found out where it happened and thought, oh my goodness. So um, a terrible tragedy and hope, hopefully the nation and the world will um, move forward and be a little bit better for it. So I wanted to start this show by saying kudos to you and a very classy way to reflect on that, um, Tim Cook. So on to the news. So I had spoken at length on previous episodes about expecting huge changes, huge things from Apple this summer because, well, we're approaching the 10th anniversary of the iPhone. Uh, it's iOS 10, big, big things. But as it turns out, we get small things, but a lot of them. And only a fraction of it um, dedicated really to HomeKit and home automation. In fact, the, the segment uh, in iOS and the iOS presentation at WWDC this morning was less than four minutes long, but there were little bits in the other pieces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run through all the four different OS's that they have now. Uh, of course, uh, OS 10 now being renamed to Mac OS, kind of harkening back to the old days of Apple. And uh, we'll just run through them and uh, here's what affects uh, home automation, home kit, the smarter home as we like to call it. Watch OS, all right, the Apple Watch debuted, um, debuted nearly two years ago, hit the market actually last year. The main thing is improved speed. Even with watchOS 2 and native apps, the apps take too long to open. They take too, too long to load. So apparently with watchOS 3, they're gonna do some magic and caching and keep things open behind the scenes so that when you want to unlock, say your August smart lock, which is sitting over there, you can actually use the watch faster than perhaps you could get out your keys, which is, I tend to use my keys because it's too long to open to swipe up, to find the app, or to ask Siri, or whatnot. Just takes too darn long. And August, please, please, please make a complication so I can tap directly from the watch face and just open the app, get the status, and unlock the lock. That's pretty much it for watchOS. watchOS has been able to control HomeKit through Siri nearly since, it's, um, since it hit the market, so um, no new developments there. Okay, tvOS, the brand new Apple TV that uh, was announced and debuted last fall, um, gets some upgrades, gains HomeKit control via Siri. I'm talking specifically about the Siri remote that you can talk to the Apple TV fourth generation. Um, there are a handful of apps in the App Store on the TV right now that kind of do some home automation, but they're just like companion apps to the full-fledged iOS apps. So now you'll be able to say, hey Siri, change the temperature, to 70 degrees or turn the light on or off or, or set a scene whatnot right from the remote, which is what we've been hoping for and that they should have done probably when the TV, uh, when the new Apple TV debuted last fall. Um, apps, of course, can now directly take advantage of HomeKit on the TV, so you'll see a proliferation of those. All right, so Mac OS, um, changing from the name uh, OS X now to Mac OS. Um, Siri comes to the Mac. Will Siri be able to control your HomeKit home automation devices from your Mac when you're running a Siri command on your Mac? They didn't demo it. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. My guess is that it would be able to since you're going to be able to control things through Siri on say your Apple TV. You can do it through iPad, iPhone, so many different things. 
um, that are all cross-connected through iCloud, so it makes sense that it would work. They didn't demo it, they didn't detail it, so we don't have an exact answer, yet my guess would be, yes, you would be able to do it. Uh, we'll find out, we'll update you through social media and web articles as the week progresses. So that's pretty much it for the Mac OS in terms of home automation. iOS, um, Siri got developer access, which means Siri can talk to apps, apps can talk to Siri directly, which helps quite a bit. People have been clamoring for this. We thought about how it would affect home automation, but of course Siri does already work with HomeKit, which is how you work with home automation. And the app types that can work with Siri are actually limited to calling, messaging, payments, photos, workouts, and booking rides like Lyft and Uber. So not all apps will be able to talk directly to Siri, but a good chunk of them. All right. HomeKit, uh, new device types, air conditioning, cameras, doorbells, air purifiers, and humidifiers. I think those two last topics are, are those last device types are not even actually on the market yet with HomeKit compatible um, devices, but obviously they will be now. In fact, speaking of that, many manufacturers, they have this huge list. We'll put it up on the screen. Thanks, uh, Apple, um, for putting that in your keynote. All these manufacturers either have announced um, HomeKit compatible devices or they are shipping them now. And we've reviewed you know, a handful of these and we'll, we'll be reviewing more in the future. So even some home builders are getting on board. Lennar and KB Home are gonna actually start building homes with HomeKit devices and Siri, not Siri, but you know, HomeKit um, technology built right in. So you move in and you're done uh, to a certain degree. We'll find out more as we get details on that uh, as they become available and we'll update you. So the last thing, finally, a home app, right? There was a health app for HealthKit, so why no home app for HomeKit? But, all right, uh, aside from being frustrated with that, there it is, it's there now. It'll be in iOS 10 when, uh, when that actually goes to the public um, fully this fall. The home app will be your center for controlling all the different things that you've got in your home that are connected to HomeKit devices. You can force touch on an icon and change the um, color, change the brightness and so forth, turn it on, turn it off and uh, of course activate scenes and uh, configure your home. Configuration has been limited so far to various apps and only the best ones or there are a handful of that can actually completely configure um, your HomeKit devices. So it's kind of been a jungle, kind of a minefield of uh, how you get all this stuff to work with each other. So a home app, super, 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 super awesome. Thank you Apple for finally, finally doing that. And controls, built directly into Control Center. So swipe up from the bottom, swipe to the left, and there's your favorite scenes and devices for immediate access. And even things like the lock screen, this is a demo that they showed, I didn't invent, I didn't come up with this myself, but you can imagine being able to interact with things right on the iOS lock screen, things like doorbells. Someone rings the doorbell and then here's a live video from its camera and you could even unlock it. Super, super, super fantastic. Um, I just think we're finally seeing all this integration come into play. We don't know yet, we'll get into this. Um, we talked a little bit about this, that battery only devices that run on Bluetooth only like this weather sensor from Elgato Eve that we reviewed um, about a month and a half ago or so, and we'll be reviewing a couple other products from them. Bluetooth battery devices can't yet be triggers for HomeKit scenes. S uh, Triggers or whatever you want to call them are basically the glue, the magic of home automation. It allows devices to automate themselves. That's why it's called home automation. Home automation isn't just about pressing buttons and having lights come on or appliances come on. It's all the behind the scenes stuff. That's what makes it so wonderful and that's why you rely on it so much. Um, we don't know whether that issue has been addressed in iOS 10. Um, it wasn't in iOS 9. We think it will be, so we'll find out more as uh, sessions come out and details come out of WWDC, which runs all of this week, and uh, we'll get those to you, and uh, we'll be able to update as we do our reviews of additional products that are battery-only, Bluetooth-only devices. All right, that is literally it. That's what it says on my show notes, so that is the end of the episode. If you like this kind of content, if you haven't found this before, please go ahead and subscribe, and welcome to Smarter Home Life. We're gonna have lots of cool episodes coming up. We just hit two years in April, and we are going strong. So um, other ways to support us or like us, obviously you can hit thumbs up on this video. 
and there are a couple other buttons on the screen right now other ways to support us we'll have more social media and web article updates um, throughout the week as we get more details on some of these little pieces of home kit news that we couldn't get today at the keynote and i will keep you updated otherwise i am jody ganzik and i'll see you next time right here on smarter home life <laughs>